Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still watching uh, Nile Cruz on ITV International. And in this segment, dear viewers, of course, the World Tourism Day was established on the 2nd of January of 1975 on the entry into force of statues adopted on 27th of September of the year 1970 in Mexico City. World Tourism Day, or the WTD, has been uh, commemorated on the 27th of September each year since 1980. The date marks the anniversary of the adoption of the UNWTO statutes in 1970. Its purpose is to foster awareness among the international community of the importance of tourism and its social, cultural and political and economic value. And in this context, dear viewers, we have with us Mr. Amr Atif, who is a tour guide, and it's a pleasure to have you with us today, Mr. Thank Ram. You. Thank, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Amr. Now, to start with, what is meant by sustainable heritage tourism? Sustainable heritage tourism is the interaction mm. between, uh, th that is social, socio-economical and cultural and environmental, uh, that creates a win-win relationship between the group of stakeholders and the local community mm. to make sure that they would fulfill their needs and not affect the upcoming uh, 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 requirements of the future generation and at the same time maintain the sites and preserve them to keep them well uh, maintained and preserved for the future generations to come okay so this um, from your own uh, perspective does tourism in Egypt start to follow sustainable measures yes for sure I mean tourism in Egypt has been following sustainable measures uh, 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 big time and you can uh, feel it uh, in the sites and with uh, what the government are uh, the steps that the government are taking uh, uh, for sustainability uh, for instance uh, the government has been helping hotels to go eco-friendly uh, uh, we have more than 80 hotels that became eco-friendly nowadays and more than 20,000 rooms uh, that have been trained, the staff has been trained to uh, 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 become uh, uh, eco and, and green hotels uh, and also protecting the sites and preserving them. Uh, you notice that in the archaeological sites, for instance, in the Valley of the Kings, uh, in the past they used to allow the guides to guide inside the tombs in the Valley of the Kings. And that would affect negatively uh, the, the archaeological sites because uh, the travelers would breathe on the walls and affect the colors. Nowadays, they don't allow guiding inside the tombs in the Valley of the Kings and the Valley of the Queens. Mm. And that also goes for the Temple of Abu Simbel, for instance. Mm. Yes. Wonderful, sir. Thank you. Yes. Um, heritage tourism stakeholders, if we're talking about that, what are the institutions and entities that can make, that can make tourism more sustainable? Everybody who is involved in the tourism industry can make tourism more sustainable. If we're talking about the travel agencies, if we're talking about the international bodies, the international communities, the local community, or, uh, everybody who's in, and, and the people, if we're talking about the NGOs and the volunteer uh, 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 community, everybody should be involved in the sustainability of tourism, protecting tourism, protecting the sites and making sure that uh, uh, the, the flow of the sustainable uh, 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 heritage is going uh, 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 steadily. Mm -hmm. What do you think about a private-public uh, partnership for sustainable tourism? Private-public partnership for sustainable tourism is very important. They call it the PPP. Why and do they call it the PPP? Private-public public uh, uh, partnership. partnership, PPP. And uh, it's very important in that matter. Uh, and also Egypt has been uh, uh, taking very sure steps uh, with the, with the private-public partnership. Uh, in Siwa, uh, uh, the, the hotels, there, is, there are hotels that are very are eco-friendly. And there is also uh, a, a, mu a museum in Sharm el-Sheikh that has been built by uh, uh, one of the businessmen and uh, the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities are the one that is providing the museum with the artifacts and the exhibition. So it's a win-win relationship. Exactly. Uh, and uh, 
the, the, the people who work in the museum, some of them are uh, uh, working for the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, and some of them are being paid by the businessmen who built the museum. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a clear example for the PPP. Yes. And how can we get the local community to get more engaged uh, with sustainable uh, tourism? Local community is a very important uh, aspect in the uh, sustainable tourism. And we can get them involved by lots of things. I mean, we can train the local community, and this is going on already, uh, and, get, and try to find them jobs within the archaeological sites. The local community who live uh, around the archaeological sites we can get them engaged by training them, raising their awareness, and telling them how important the archaeological sites are, so they would be protecting the archaeological sites and taking care of it. Mm -hmm. In some of the museums worldwide, they uh, appoint uh, 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 somebody from the museum, like a curator or the, manage the manager of the museum, they appoint him in the city council of the area. And when he is in the city council, he can tell what the community needs and see how the museum can help and get involved with the local community more. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the ways that can be done. Um, before uh, we started the interview, sir, um, me and you were discussing your love, uh, of course, of Isna. Sure. Uh, what are some of the treasures in the city that you really admire and that made it a very special place to your heart? Well, Esna, Esna of course, in the south of Luxor, and the highlight there would be the temple of Khinum, the god of creation for the ancient Egyptians. God of? Creation. He created. In Arabic? In, uh, in Arabic. In Arabic, yeah. Uh, huwa ilah al al huwa al mm. huwa al Only the name. I want to know yeah, only the name. The god of creation for the uh, ancient Egyptians. And he was a ram-headed god. There is a Greco-Roman temple that's in the town of Esna. And... Uh, that's a, a very high uh, uh, tourist attraction. But that's not only what ESNA has. ESNA actually uh, has the local community. We used to take the groups on a tour, a walking tour, in the streets of ESNA. They get to see the market, the local market. They get to see the, uh, 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 the, the houses, the facades of the homes that still keeps the uh, the, 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 authenticity, the, the, the authenticity of, authenticity of, 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 of the place. Yeah. Not only this, but they get to see how the Egyptians live. So they get to see real Egypt. There is also one of the homes there of a mayor. His name is Hussein, Hussein family. And we used to take the groups to the, fa to the house, inside his house, and they give them tea and offer them food and, and talk to them. And it will be interesting enough to know that late President Sadat, Anwar Sadat stayed in this house even before he came to power. He stayed in this house during the British occupation. So they welcomed him in this house. So it became part of the history of, of the town of Esna. Mm -hmm. and so what I want to say is the traveler, when they get to walk in Esna, they don't see Egypt from a tourist bus. You know, no, they get to see real Egypt. They go and walk down the street and see real Egypt. And it's all about people. It's people, people, all the time. Yes. Um, what are the attractions that a visit to Cairo by night would offer to the visitors? Cairo, of course, has lots of, of things to offer. And, and at night, they can uh, uh, go on a cruise, on an Nile cruise, enjoy the Egyptian cuisine, and also uh, 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 enjoy the belly dancer show, the Egyptian belly dancer show, and the dervish dancer. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, Cairo by night offers. They can also do the walking tour of, uh, of downtown Cairo. Kastri Neil Bridge and the area of downtown which became beautiful. The Tahrir Square and uh, Cairo Tower. Uh, so uh, that's another thing that Cairo offers. The Egyptian Museum of Antiquities offers a night visit two days a week. That's uh, a very uh, good... Uh piece of information because I never knew that it offers at night. Uh, yes, a visit. it offers a, a visit at night on uh, Sunday and Thursday of every week. And Sunday actually, and Thursday of every week. Sunday and Thursday of every week, Egyptian Museum offers a night visit. And the feedback we get from the travelers when they visit the museum at night is very positive. They like it and they get to enjoy it more.
So we also have Al Hussein of Al course and of course. the Moise Street. And the Moise Street walking yes. tour of Al Moise yes, Street. Yes, it's a wonderful amazing. walking. Uh, Absolutely, it's a wonderful Islamic. walk at night if you go. Sure. Uh, and of course, and watch uh, of course all the Egyptian uh, culture that we have over there and civilization. Sure. It's wonderful. Sure. Of course. Okay, sir. So at least 25 million people spread over 52 countries are display are, are displaced by violence and of course disasters. Uh, which uh, tourism uh, receipts in every country after uh, which is affected by this. How far is this true? It's absolutely correct. I mean, uh, tourism is a very fragile industry. I mean, uh, anything can affect the industry of tourism. And Egypt, if we give an example of Egypt, the uprising that took place in 2011, the so-called the uh, 25th of January Revolution, has affected tourism big time in Egypt. Uh, tourism has went down by 90% after the 2011 uh, uh, uprising. Uh, so that's one of the aspects. And we were about to recover by, the, by 2018 and 2019. And the number of travelers that came to Egypt has increased uh, uh, in those two years. But then we got affected again by the COVID, exactly. by the COVID-19. So that gives a clear example that anything can affect the industry of tourism at any place. But uh, the uprising took place in 2011, of course, was in Egypt only, whereas the, the COVID, COVID is, is international, is, is, is worldwide. Globally, uh, so yes. it's totally different that it hit tourism all over the world, That's which right. is Absolutely. a very, very big issue. Yes. It took place and hit the tourism sector, of course, and Egypt, of course, was sure. hit. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mr. Amram, very much interested to learn more about sustainable tourism and uh, to raise more awareness when it comes to sustainable tourism here in Egypt. What are the places here in Egypt uh, that uh, maintain uh, sustainable tourism or apply it in a way? Egypt uh, is, is applying sustainable tourism in lots of places, of course. And of course, you know that Egypt is considered to be one of the greatest countries worldwide that accommodate uh, 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 travelers and that has uh, archaeological sites. Uh, if, to give an example would be uh, uh, Sharm el Sheikh. In Sharm el Sheikh, the, the government is taking uh, good steps for the environmental issues and protecting the corals, uh, and uh, lots of regulations has been taken to uh, 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 maintain sustainable tourism. Uh, another example, uh, as I was telling you, is Siwa. Uh, there is, uh, when you go there, uh, uh, the hotels in Siwa are, are, are going very much eco-friendly. Uh, they don't use electricity. So, lots of, they don't use electricity. They use candles, oil lamps. Even when you go in the hotels and you see the beds, they are like brick built, and the hotels are built out of adobe brick. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's all eco-friendly. Uh, lots of the seats and the tables are made out of uh, the reeds of the palm trees. Mm. Uh, the welcome uh, 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 fruit they offer is the dates, which is local, uh, of course, local uh, 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 fruit in Siwa. So if we can, if we can say, we can say that Sharm el Sheikh and Siwa are two. I, I believe Hergada. Uh, Hergada as well, of course. Her Hergada as well is taking very short steps with uh, sustainability. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Atif, of course, uh, to uh, uh, keep Egypt's economy uh, stable and strong, uh, tourism sector is one of the most important sectors to work on to, uh, of course, increase our economic stability and to keep our economic stability and to increase, of course, our, econ our, our economic uh, standards. Um, how can we raise awareness towards this concept and how um, much is Egypt uh, hit and threatened by, of course, the coronavirus pandemic and any other um, aspect that is hitting our economy or tourism, actually? Unfortunately, coronavirus uh, pandemic has affected tourism, as you were saying, worldwide. But we were lucky because the, uh, uh, the uh, Secretary General of the World Tourism Organization uh, visited Egypt uh, only uh, 10 days ago. That's, Mr. A, that's a good yeah. news. He visited Egypt and uh, I happened to be uh, his guide when he was here. And he have been to lots of places with his delegation. And I think this visit will help a lot uh, uh, in, 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 in promoting Egypt 
and in uh, uh, attracting lots of uh, tours to the country. If you hear the comments of uh, the Secretary General of the World uh, Tra Tourism Organization, he said that Egypt is taking more pre precautions than other countries that he has been to. And he's, he was impressed with everything that he has seen, not only him, but with the delegation as well. So I think that's a very good thing that Egypt has done uh, recently. Uh, the Ministry of uh, Tourism and uh, uh, Antiquities uh, has been promoting Egypt, and Dr. Khaled Al Anani invited uh, uh, the Secretary General. Uh, if you are asking about uh, what, what can affect uh, Egypt uh, uh, or be a threat, actually, tourism is a fragile industry. So, uh, of course, political situation can be effective, and uh, uh, corona, coronavirus uh, was effective. Uh, uh, but I think Egypt has been taking a very good steps. And if it was not of the coronavirus, uh, we would have had the same number of tours that you, or the same number of travelers that used to visit Egypt before uh, 2011. Um, sir, 2020 uh, was expected to witness a large number of uh, tourists that would re were supposedly to reach 12 million uh, visitors yes. uh, that were supposed to come to Egypt. Unfortunately, due to the coronavirus pandemic, that did not take place. Yes. Uh, how did this affect our economy? Of course, it has affected our economy. And uh, tourism is the biggest uh, uh, source of income uh, in Egypt. Uh, it, rep it, it brings in almost uh, 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 11 billion dollars uh, from the total GDP that, uh, uh, of Egypt. Uh, and of course, this number has been affected. Uh, um, I would say that the number of travelers that visit Egypt at that time, uh, from, from March up till uh, 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 last month, for instance, was only uh, thousands of numbers, like 100,000 or something. So that can give you an idea uh, from the 13 million travelers that were supposed to come or that Egypt was expecting. So it unfortunately it affected us. But uh, I'm very uh, positive that Egypt will overcome it and that tourism will come back. And the coronavirus will end uh, uh, as it started, will, uh, will end and uh, things will go back on track, inshallah. Uh, sir, back again to the issue of sustainable tourism because this is very trending around the world. Yes. How can we raise awareness here in Egypt when it comes to uh, sustainable tourism? Because sometimes there is a conflict between achieving profit from tourism and maintaining uh, sustainable in, in tourism. Absolutely correct. I mean, the more travelers in, 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 uh, you have in any country, uh, this practice lots of pressure on the, uh, on the environment of the country. Uh, and uh, on the resources of the country. Uh, but we can, uh, and Egypt has been already doing it, uh, uh, taking those steps, raising awareness of the local community. The travelers who come are already uh, uh, aware of the importance of the archaeological sites and the importance of the environment. And they're, they're keeping it maintained. Uh, but we need to play more uh, role in raising awareness of the local community. And this is the responsibility of everybody who is in the tourism section. As I was saying, the travel agencies, the uh, NGOs, uh, the volunteer uh, uh, section, and uh, the, the people themselves, uh, by taking care of the site and maintaining their archaeological sites and protecting it. And this will happen when, when they get involved more within the archaeological sites. UNESCO has had a project a few years ago raising awareness of the local community of Dahshur. Mm. And uh, I was working in this project training the local community. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to train the local community to be local guides in Dahshur. So the travelers would come with their guide, visit the pyramid, visit this and that. But when they go to Dahshur, there will be local guides in Dahshur. Oh. who would explain the site and, and walk them through the area, which is their homeland, so they know it like the back of their hands. And it will be very impressive, of course, for the traveler to come and see somebody from the area who would be uh, uh, guiding well, actually, him. Actually, I experienced this in Luxor and Aswan yes. when, when, uh, when I went to the temples, exactly. the locals and the, the guards lo there were... Absolutely. 
together with the guides, of course. Absolutely. But they, they, it's like they, they, they belong to the place yes. and they would tell you the history yes. of the places. The most important thing to raise awareness of the community is to get them more involved mm -hmm. with the sites. Uh, the Ministry of Antiquities and uh, Tourism has been uh, trying to do that by creating craft center in, in El Fustat. There is a craft center with the Minister of Culture and the Minister of Tourism and Antiquities. And this craft center, you see the locals doing the crafts, the handcrafts, uh, the, the, the brass work, the leather work, the mother of pearl, and this and that. The pottery. And, and the pottery. And uh, when the traveler would come and, and walk through this market, uh, uh, it's very impressive. Uh, and again, it's a win-win relationship. They, they would buy from this uh, uh, souvenirs and that would help the economy of the area and at the same time help the local community. Also, uh, uh, the food. The local food is very important with sustainability. Mm. Uh, uh, if we can create a dish like the Egyptian kashari, for instance. The Egyptian kashari is, is, is very good and it's very filling and, and nutrition and uh, people uh, like it. And the full and, and the full and tamaya. So we can have like local restaurants uh, closer to the archaeological sites because there are places where people want to have lunch and, and, and get a bite and they, they don't know where to go. So we can have this local restaurants which is it's very, it's very healthy, very good and it's very Egyptian. So we can have those restaurants. First of all, we'll create jobs for the local community so they will work in the restaurants, they will be serving and working there and uh, so they will be benefiting and at the same time uh, it will be good for the travelers who visit the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is something that's going on worldwide now, uh, having the local, local homes as uh, uh, shel shelter or motels for the travelers. The Isn't trend, in Aswan, like in Aswan mm -hmm. and in Menia, and, and it's happening. Uh, so the traveler would come and staying, instead of staying only in fancy hotels, well, there are people who want to stay in fancy hotels and they can do that. But there are others who want to come and stay uh, with a family and, uh, for, a, for a week or two. Uh, and uh, they, of course, rent a room uh, in, in the house and uh, be closer to the local community, interact with the local community. And uh, as they say, uh, walk the walk and talk the talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, this will help the uh, economy and help the local community and get them more engaged and support sustainability. Okay, sir, so back again to the precautionary, the safe precautionary measures, uh, which, uh, of course, the uh, Egyptian government applied uh, with regards to the coronavirus pandemic and which were praised and hailed by the World Health Organization. Will this be um, an importance for tourists uh, to come to Egypt and feel it as a safe country and come and make tourists come back easily in the coming um, period as the coronavirus pandemic is still around and we are st we, we are starting to live with it? Yes, that's, that's a very good question because uh, uh, most of the travel agencies worldwide now are uh, making sure that uh, 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 th there are uh, safety measurements with the coronavirus. And uh, actually some of the travel agencies contact the guides and they gave us a course uh, on the internet about the safety measurements, I mean, uh, everything that we should be doing during the tours and, and we get a certificate. So lots of the, uh, most of the guides actually are now certified with the uh, 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 safety measurements of the coronavirus. And this is important, uh, that the travelers would know uh, that uh, uh, it's safe to travel to Egypt. And the government has been taking also uh, very good steps, uh, the PCR that has been announced that the traveler cannot come enter the country unless they have uh, a PCR done and they, they're uh, uh, clear uh, from the coronavirus. They don't have a, a coronavirus. I think that's very important. And uh, I'll go back again to the visit of uh, uh, the, the, the uh, um, Secretary General of the World Tourism Organization and his delegation. You know what they said? They said that they are impressed with the steps that Egypt is taking with the coronavirus. And they are saying again that the, uh, the precautions that has been taken by Egypt uh, uh, is even more than what they have seen in other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Amr Atif, uh, tour guide, I'd like to thank you very much for being with us in this edition of Narcos. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, sir, for joining us. It was a pleasure, of course. And thank you very much for your informative knowledge.
added to our pro it added to our program a lot. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Dear viewers, stay with us. Uh, we'll be back again. Don't go. We are in the beautiful city of Sharm el Sheikh. <laughs> It was a beautiful episode here in Bahrain Oasis. It's my pleasure to have you in my home. It's a pleasant day coming here from the church of St. Mary. We are in the uh, Sultan Farag ibn Baru uh, Mosque. <laughs> Really, we want to show our feelings towards our country. Well, well, dear viewers, hope you've enjoyed being with us in today's episode of Nile Cruise, where we brought you uh, different segments. We brought you a variety of different topics that hope you've enjoyed today. Helena? Yes, and from a, a, a very unique location to uh, Rana, the episode of Nile Cruise was brought to you from the Grotto Garden or the Fish uh, Garden uh, here in Zamalek in Cairo. We hope that by now you know a lot about this beautiful place. It is definitely worth visiting. So until we meet you again, you are in the company of my colleague, Ronald Assas, myself, Helen Hamalawi. See you soon.